Hey there friends, how's it going? I thought it would be fun to show you some very, very weird stuff that you'd only find in Ireland. Because I found this list that was made up of stuff that are Irish, and it was just all ridiculous. Like, what do you mean we don't have road rage? Get out of my way, everyone! I'm going after whoever wrote that! I wanted to start off with the puck fair. You probably haven't heard of this. I'd be amazed if you have. Basically, the town goes up a mountain and they find a goat. They bring it back down to the village and it's called King Puck then. That goat has won the privilege of being put up high in a box for like three days. And I know what you're thinking, ah, this is a long time ago, you know? Times were different. Do you know, I think he'd be all right. I'm sure he has food and water. It's only a few hours every day. <laughs> well, that's footage from six months ago. So this is one of the oldest traditions in Ireland, I think, when it comes to like events or fairs. Look at that giant tower they've set up for the ghost. And the thing is, it's rural Ireland. So you know, they had like the budget going, Ugh. We could get fiber broadband to the whole village, but then we'd have to make the, the goat tower only two stories tall. Yeah, you're right, sorry. I don't know what I was thinking. Who say strict protocols are in place. What strict protocols? What do you do for putting a goat up a tower? Like, I'm not saying they're not taking after the goat. I just don't know what has to be done. Comments are turned off. Oh, damn, that could have been interesting. So there was two things I wanted to comment on on the old footage before we move on to something else weird about Ireland. And there's plenty there, and I'm not talking about me. Before you even start, get out of here, you're banned. So one was that this rig <laughs> seems incredibly risky. Asher Jacobs, will we pull at the same time? Asher, no, just start pulling, sure. We'll imagine we count it to three and just hope the goat will be all right. Jeez, I was worried about the goat, but look at these two fellas just lifting him up at the top. Oh, you lunatics. He's wearing his dress shoes. Well, honey, I have to climb the tower today. I'd say I'll wear the formal sure. It is a Sunday after all. And the other thing was just this woman hanging a baby out the window. I don't know why. I guess that baby likes goats or something. What a horrible thing to do to any creature. Look, Mike, that's a baby, okay? You can't just call it a creature. Okay, so if no one else is going to mention 532, call social services, that's the baby. Imagine making a video and being canceled for it like 50 years later. <laughs> I don't know why you're into this, but we're stopping it right now. You should be ashamed of yourself. Okay, so this actually is what really inspired this video. I was thinking of this the other day because it's a warning when you go into the cinema, you know, just about general politeness and emergency exits. And I want to see, can you understand any of it? I'm gonna put subtitles down the bottom, hide them, just don't look at them, see if you can figure it out and then rewatch and see if you were right. Because everyone I bring to these cinemas, they have no idea what's going on. I'd like to have it, if it's a kind of effort, it's got a thing anyway, and it's very important, it's for y'all to be quiet. All right? No talking, no whispering, nothing. Turn off your phones and keep your feet off the seats. It's also very important to locate your exits, all right? Locate your exits. And finally, finally, what the? Come here, let's talk to Smiley first ball again. Keep your feet off the seats. It's also very important to locate your exits. Yeah, let me know how you did on that one. I'm super curious. I'm sorry about the quality, by the way. I looked everywhere. That was the best one I could get. I'm guessing it was part of like a 3D movie or something. They're like, I want to record this short. I'll do it at the 3D one, because I like when there's random reds and blues everywhere. You know, another thing about Ireland, uh, the Eurovision Song Contest, we're actually the country with the most wins, believe it or not. And if you don't believe it, I'm going to show you our entry in 2008. Oh, this song just always brought out the emotions on me. This one is a big one for Ireland. Oh, no, wait, it was a, a puppet of a turkey that we sent. Uh, this was a year we, we didn't win. I think this was about the time we got desperate because we hadn't won in a while and we're like, dude, come on, what do we need to do? Give us another one. This is all we have. Well, romance is alive and well in Listoon Varna, where the famous County Clare matchmaking festival is in full swing. That's right, there is a 120-year-old Listoon Varna matchmaking. You know, I can't really think of much that has been ongoing in Ireland for 120 years. We've not even had our independence that long. Okay, this isn't exactly what I expected. Have these people been dancing since the first one? <laughs> I was expecting really young people for some reason. While the matchmaker works to weave the love seekers together, the dancing continues. To be fair, they're having a great time. Look at them go. Oh, you can't help but clap along. Well, I can. 
but you can't, I was saying. Me, it would be weird because he wouldn't be able to hear me as I'm talking. It would kind of suck. I know what it is, yes. And if it was on this morning at nine, we'd have been here. Oh my God, she's so serious about it. <laughs> she's like, we'll be here till midnight. The guy is like, it's 12 now though. <laughs> and she's like, yeah, I'd be dancing three hours ago if they'd let me. I'm gonna dance every day. <laughs> There's nothing you can do to stop me! Oh god, how did I do that? <laughs> well, apparently we're starting soon, so be sure to like the video, because that helps me out a lot. Thanks very much. Uh, we're starting soon. This has just begun. <laughs> and the festival attracts 60,000 people over six weeks. 60,000 people over six weeks? What? The village has a population of 767 people. <laughs> this one man is keeping the village alive by having this matchmaking event. <laughs> What? <laughs> the festival is very popular among American singles. What? <laughs> Why are they coming over? <laughs> like, damn, I need an 80 year old man or Irish woman. <laughs> and here it says it goes back 150 years ago. Ah, the question just keeps getting bigger. Oh wait, hold on. Despite keeping the name of Listunverna Festival, this time it was held in Dublin. I see. All right, that makes more sense. I was wondering, because if the town is like 767 people, I don't think they could take an influx of 60,000 people showing up. Hey, can we all go in at once or should we go in at like one at a time or will we queue or what do we do? Okay, this isn't what I was looking for. While I was on this little journey, I decided I'd look up beating away the hunger because this is something we've done in my family. Uh, my father started doing it when he learned about it as a child where every new year you just smash some bread against the back door, you beat out the hunger i actually have some footage of me doing it this recent year uh, but it didn't go too well actually let there be no hunger in his home <laughs> my wrist still doesn't feel right i can't find anything about this i think i, I my dad has been lied to <laughs> wait oh wait hold on stop the press i found something banging bread on the walls and doors ah it's actually warding off evil spirits well that's good too that's handy and honestly the source is pretty reputable if you can't trust tw twinkle spelled wrong dot co dot uk who can you trust I love these lists because like I, I wanted to click on them you know jog my memory and whatnot 11 weird and wonderful irish traditions Farming. <laughs> We're so wacky and quirky, it's mad. Now, you know what I thought would be fun now? I'd show you a good old Irish recipe for some brambrack. And you might be thinking, what the hell is brambrack? <laughs> you know, pretty standard stuff. 900 gram loaf, you know, 225 gram flour, two teaspoons, blah, 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 blah. 50 mils of whiskey. That's Irishing it up. But the real secret ingredient here is not the whiskey. And that's big coming from an Irishman. It's the choking hazard that you place inside. <laughs> Not only that, this is probably like the woke version of Barnbrack. I know what you're thinking. They gotta ruin everything. Back in my day, we had the coin, the, the ring, a stick, uh, you had a bit of cloth. I think there was a P as well. And they each meant different things. Uh, sure, some of you will die. But that's just how it has to be. Now, a lot of the lists that I looked up on earlier were talking about drinking rounds. I didn't really know that wasn't a, a thing. You do that in Ireland a lot. I, I notice it in some other countries as well, but maybe not everyone. Just if you don't know, what you basically do is you go in as a group, one person pays for the first round, the next person pays for the next round, and so on and so forth. But that's not the Irish thing. The Irish thing is 12 pubs of Christmas. <laughs> wow, what an amazing magical Christmas experience. No. The 12 pubs of Christmas is an Irish Christmas tradition in which participants visit 12 different pubs in a single day having a drink at each one. I've never done this myself. I think it's a little bit too much, just my personal opinion. Don't get mad at me. You know, if you wanna go to 12 pubs in a day, you do you. But I have seen the aftermath in some towns and cities and it is awful. People falling over cars and everything. Um, and that, just, just so we're clear, I'm not talking about me. I got hit by a car, he was in the wrong, he got criminal charged. Yeah, I, I wasn't drunk, just, just, you know, that was just an example. Each of the thumbnails I get when I search for this kind of tell a story. I'm trying to picture where they are <laughs> in the 12 pubs. This one, I think second. This one, 12, definitely. He's done the 12, he's back home, and he's sorry. This one is too drunk, couldn't figure out how to use the camera, so they drew the experience instead. Okay, this creator is called the Guinness Guru. If you can trust anyone with Guinness, it's gonna be a Guinness Guru, right? Right, that's a pub. 
I don't know what number now. <laughs> he doesn't even know. It could be the 18 pubs of Christmas for all we know. <laughs> okay, the cameraman's keeping track. He's on pub nine. He's coming out much sadder this time. I personally think it's dying off. That's the guru's opinion. He's giving his opinion like really well articulated at the end of doing the 12 pubs. <laughs> Interesting. Good skill there. Or worrying. I'm not sure which. Uh, just at this point, I'd like to ask you two questions because I didn't want to dive into it right away, but some of the lists that I looked at, they always specified thanking the bus driver, which I just find ridiculous. Surely you always thank the bus driver, right? Like they drove you to where you need to go. You thank them. Is that weird? Can you tell me, please, in the comments? And two was the magpie thing. You got one for sorrow, two for joy, three for a girl, four for a boy, five for something, six for something, and so on. I don't know, I don't really see that many magpies at once, usually. But is that not a thing? Like, anytime I see one magpie, I'm like, oh, I'm lucky. Well, it's stupid superstition. But then I see two, and I'm like, all right, lucky day today. <laughs> and then I see three or four, and it's like girl or boy, and I don't understand. I don't know who they are. I are they coming for me? Am I in danger? But yeah, I was just curious about those two things because they keep coming up in lists and I've learned from moving to Spain that there's a lot of norms in countries that to an outsider you're just like, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> of course, famous Irish dancing. This was a mandatory class in school, by the way, in primary school. You had to do Irish dancing in my school for some reason. I don't know. Didn't come out of school knowing how to do my taxes, um, but I knew some little Irish jigs, so that was fun. Like, you see that? Right there, what he's doing? I, I couldn't do that, but the noise gives me PTSD, so it did contribute to me in a way. To be fair, it is actually pretty cool. Like, uh, uh, iris dancing is uh, objectively pretty cool, and it must be great for the circulation. I have terrible blood circulation. Would you like a video of me learning Irish dancing? And speaking about Irish dancing, you couldn't have Irish dancing without Irish music. This is um, a trad music, traditional music. Um, they'd often have like sessions in pubs. Uh, I've been in a pub myself before where there was like a separate little room that anyone could go into But in it, it was just people gathering and just playing their instruments together. It's really cool But then again on this video with the music JN Sabas says this makes me so proud to be Irish Which is interesting because I'm French. Honestly, I feel like most Irish people have that reaction when when they hear like American people saying I'm Irish It's not like that. We don't believe you it's just that there's so many of you claiming it. <laughs> and like, yeah, I mean, down the line, probably, there's some Irish there. We, we go everywhere. We scatter. Like, look at me now. I'm in Spain, infesting the place. Uh, some honorable mentions here. Itchy nose, the sign of a fight to come, which is bad for me because I have allergies. But that's why I'm always ready. Uh, making a bridge at cross to guard your home from evil didn't work on my home But then again the evil was coming from inside the house Honestly, if you saw like scenes from being in school like primary school with these you'd think it was just a really strange Irish sweatshop It's just kids making loads of these things and and you don't even understand what they're for really It's just the class is telling you to make them so okay <laughs> I guess I don't know. I, I guess I'll does anyone else want to take on the evil spirits? Not me. Okay, I'll do it then. I just realized those damn evil spirits knocked down a panel! What is this? Where's my Bridget's Cross? There we go. Good as new. Oh, this one's particularly terrifying if you didn't know what it was. So, um, it's very common to have a wake in Ireland. We call them a wake where you put uh, a, a person who has died in like their family home maybe, or like a funeral home, and you, you leave them there for a few days and people come visit. It's very odd. And the fact that it's called wake is a little bit scary because you're like, when do they wake? I don't know, this is terrifying. Being obsessed with Halloween, birthplace of the holiday. Despite us being the birthplace, I think it's you Americans that are obsessed with the Halloween and, and St. Patrick's. Honestly, we may have started it, but you took it and you did your own thing and it's totally cool. That's fine with us, okay? And of course, never disturb a fairy tree. You don't annoy the fairies. You'll, you'll actually often see these trees in the middle of a field and the farmer will work around it rather than destroying it. Uh, you can see like uh, fairy forts as well, which are like these old kind of hill structures. Uh, there's fairies and bread. <laughs> I know this is surprising. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's why you put the ring in as an offering. But no, you're supposed to cut open the top of like Irish soda bread so the fairies can escape. But yeah, let me know what you thought of those and let me know anything <laughs> unique about your country, particularly weird things. Ah, uh, sure. Thanks very much now for watching that. I very much appreciate it. Check out more of my content there on the screen if you got a chance. All right. Bye for now.